Hello, welcome to Randy Steffa's show, uh, episode four. Um, today, step one is going to be thank the camera person, my lovely wife Jill. And step two, what are we going to do? And what are we going to do it to? We have our lovely Kramer Pacer. You got that? Beautiful headstock. We're going to do some repairs and some setup work. It's currently got really big strings on it that are very dirty. It's got a very dirty kind of oxidized frets. So like the strings want to catch on the frets when you're trying to bend the strings. And uh, I want to set it up with lighter gauge strings that are on here. It's really not in tune. It's got some fret sprout. So we're going to deal with the fret sprout. What's fret sprout? Fret sprout? Fret sprouts. It's like What's happening is the frets are trying to grow uh, sprouts. <laughs> They're like B Brussels sprouts. They're really not very really much fun. Uh, new toys. Use this parts bag. If I can get into it, because uh, I'm not just taking the strings off. We're gonna do some disassembling. This is going to be a long and boring video. You might want to go now or uh, start hitting the fast forward button. You can watch this in two times, maybe. Should I try and crack jokes like Johnny? Yeah, of course you should. <laughs> or you could ask questions if you want to. I'm always got to be asking questions. Okay, since I know nothing about guitars, what are you doing right now? Taking the strings off. They're this held in a, by bolts? This is a Floyd Rose guitar. So these strings lock here by these little bolts. So that keeps them in. If you're interested in Floyd Rose guitar setup, we're going to be doing some of that. We really are. But step one is take the strings off. What's the difference between a regular guitar and a Floyd Rose guitar? <laughs> One doesn't have a Floyd Rose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Floyd Rose, you know. If you're interested in Floyd Roses, if you like Floyd Roses, I love Floyd Roses. I've been hearing about them since we've been married, so about yeah. 30 years. 30 years of Floyd Rose. My first Floyd Rose I got in 85. I believe it's 85. I have the bill somewhere down in the basement in a box. So how often should strings get changed on a guitar? Um, they should get changed often as needed. <laughs> That's a complicated subject. How often they change the strings on the guitar. Depends how sweaty you might be. <sighs> Did I take the Allen wrench off this already? Put it down somewhere. Other fun Floyd Rose stringing stuff. Just for a moment here, I'm going to pull out one of my other new toys I got. Got a clothespin. Got a whole bag of them for $1.50 at the dollar store. What are you going to do with it? I'm just going to use it as a little wedge here. To hold this bridge in position without the string tension on it. going to make it slightly easier to get these strings off, which is literally undoing an Allen bolt. I think one of the reasons I neglected this guitar, yes this is my guitar, 
And yes, it's been very neglected. Is the, the whammy bars loose? I'm gonna fix that too. But for so now, I'm gonna get a good shot of your knuckles there. Shot of my knuckles. Good shot of the strings taken off. I'm gonna retighten these with my fingers. Because if you don't, these little blocks that are the vise that holds the string and the bridge and the saddle can fall out and get lost and they're tiny little black things and you'll never find them. You can see the tiny little black blocks, maybe. Anyways, I'm gonna put this Allen wrench here. Always be careful with these. These are dangerous. The car strings are dangerous. They poke people. Bits of them. kinds of strange places and stick people's fingers and feet. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning before I do anything else. Sometimes I've seen people cut strings off guitars. Why yeah. do they do that? It saves a little time. More dangerous though, right? I'm just trying out this magic cleaning press stuff. This is new stuff for me. It cost $7, $8. But supposedly safe for all kinds of musical instrument things. And maybe it's enough just to get this little oxidation off these frets. I think it might be. I don't think I need anything more than that. This is really nice guitar it was really well set up when i stopped playing it for a while and i think this is doing a pretty decent job it's getting pretty gross and dirty fast let's see that <laughs> oh my you can take a look you can see like this one's already getting shinier shinier compared to this kind of goldish color almost on there that's the oxidation and that's just not comfortable to play on So slowly, slowly, back and forth we go. Got another great new toy at the dollar store for doing this, actually. <laughs> Jumbo craft sticks. side of it. You can make a little tool out of it. I don't want to go with the tops. So maintaining frets. What are we doing today? We're gonna what make <laughs> what are you doing today? What am I doing today? Number two, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna make this thing shine. It's just gonna shine. It's gonna look like a million dollars. It's gonna play like lightning fast. And it's not gonna hurt <laughs> when I play it anymore. And this thing's old. And it's been really dry and things are starting to warm up. A little dusty. Too. So if I get rid of this, fret sprout thing now a little bit. Yeah. Get back to a little bit of this. Now how often do people actually do this to their guitar all the time or no? Should they? Well, 
I don't course they should. think this is quite such an issue until you uh, neglect the guitar for a while. But it is the kind of thing you mostly you take it to the repair guy to do. It's not so hard. It's just like polishing the silverware, really. Oh, I dropped my miracle cleaning cloth. Maintaining your instruments. Maintaining it, yeah. Well, this one I'm bringing back to life a little bit. Because because it was just sitting in its case, rotting a little bit. Got all this oxidation built up on it. I just really like this guitar. I want to play it some more. So I guess I got to do all this work. Yeah, this is doing a good job. I like this stuff. It's really mild. Really easy. Supposedly this is good for wood and metal. Supposedly it won't hurt wood or metal. We're gonna find out. Is it natural? On this vintage Kramer guitar. I could be wrecking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It actually does look a lot better. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to cut myself a new piece of this stuff. I guess it was just kind of my test square thing. But. Indeed, indeed. And yeah, this is just keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm a little bit too impatient to kind of sit on one fret and work for a long time. Just kind of an initial cleanup. Yeah, and an initial inspection. What's going on? What's going on? Just gotta adjust that a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Bob Ross of guitars. <laughs> yes. If you need a, if you need to go to sleep, you can just think about polishing your frets, because <laughs> it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This one almost looks like to me like it's lifting up a bit, so I'm pushing on it, seeing if it's moving. I don't think it is. I think there's just a little shrinkage in the wood that I'm seeing. All right, this thing's getting pretty damn filthy. I'm grossed out by it. If this was someone else's guitar, not mine, I might want gloves. Uh, dirt, <laughs> gross. Dead skin cells. Mm -hmm. Stuff's coming Germs. off in my hand. Is this kind of powdery wax and dirt mixture? It's really cool. I'm going to start up on this end and go back the other way. Give people wax brushes? What do you mean by powdery wax? I think, I think this stuff has coconut wax or some kind of wax in it. Coconut oil is definitely in it. 